Hey guys, it's Kit. Um, gosh, I wish I could get on here under better circumstances, but um, such is the line of my work. I guess that's just not possible. So, the world has officially gone mad. Things are going to hell in a handbasket. It doesn't matter what country you were born into or live in, there are serious problems facing us right now, and quite probably even more serious ones ahead. If it isn't one thing coming at us, it's another. So, go ahead and paint me paranoid, those that will, but those who know, those who see, those who research and feel the changes that are coming, this is for you. I'm not going to waste time ticking off the reasons, the issues, the problems, the multiple scenarios we are facing. There are simply too many for one person to keep track of at this point, and we all know it. I made a promise yesterday. I shimmied out of saying I would lay low for a while, and instead settled for agreeing that I would be careful. In a manner of speaking, this is me keeping that promise. Consider for a moment that today the Pentagon declared the Internet a war domain. This is part of a cybersecurity plan that was released this morning. Um, they cite it as being for the protection of America's infrastructure against terrorists, right? Well, what this effectively does in reality is it will allow government agencies, especially the, the Department of Defense and the Department of Homeland Security, whom we already know are performing social media monitoring, um, and that's verifiable by FBO report, among other things. But, you know, we know, we know they're doing this. But this gives them the legal right to shut you down or lock you up if they feel there's need. Um, the guidelines they use from what is considered domestic terrorism are extremely broad. Broad enough that if you say something that makes somebody uncomfortable, especially speaking out against your own government, then they now have the legal authority to do something about it. They don't need a warrant or anything happy like that. And we know this has been going on illegally. This is just them putting it into place so now you can't come back at them. You can't come at them with a constitutional lawyer because it's a done deal. So don't kid yourselves that this is solely to go after and combat foreign intelligence organizations who might hack into sensitive systems within the government. By their own word, this plan calls for them to expand their ability to thwart attacks from other nations and groups. It does not say international groups, and the word domestic is used more than once. Um, they intend to build up their cyber workforce. So they're going to be hiring a number of new ITs and creating who knows how many new agencies, councils, and departments of the like. They also plan to expand collaboration with the private sector. More contracts, more partnerships, more people, more companies who will be keeping an eye out for anything they list in their guidelines as threats. This also says the Pentagon will continue strong cyber R&D spending even in a time of declining national security budgets. You know, with everything that's going on with the debt ceiling distraction, and yes, I'm saying distraction, um, <sighs> there's no place that we could cut spending, right? None. I could give you a million places to cut spending. God, go look at the FBO reports. It's insane. Um, in addition to this, the Pentagon announced a new pilot program with industry designed to encourage companies to voluntarily opt into increased sharing of information about malicious or unauthorized cyber activity. That is hackers, that is also truth seekers that might be pointing out the facts. Hmm. 
Why would they want to do that? DHS will, of course, be supportive by encouraging small and medium-sized businesses to be involved in information sharing because, hey, the See Something, Say Something program has to be taken to the next level, and there will no doubt be several more programs to enslave and brainwash citizens to turn them against each other. Another means of intentional divide. So, add to that <laughs> the recent disappearances of researchers, whether they are going off the grid by choice or force. Um, you know, we lost uh, Chemtrail Cowboy today. He signed off put up his final video. We'll see if he stays gone, but looks like he's bugging out. Um, we've got the reported arrests of truthers and Tea Party leaders, a matter which needs further investigation. If anyone's heard anything about that, please let me know. Um, we've got our Facebook censorship aimed at the Intel Hub, and Intel Hub is not alone there. There are other groups that um, organizers cannot get in to access information or add information. Uh, messages are blocked, or the group site is blocked on Facebook altogether. Um, even as rumors the thought of such things has made a lot of us question things. And what if it gets worse? Or when it gets worse, rather, how will we communicate? If YouTube or the Internet as a whole went down tomorrow, who would we ramble to? Who would we connect with and how? Would we regret not taking the time to put the communication issues to bed by seeking out those who would stand by us in such an event. I would. Um, above anything else I say from this point in the video on, please remember that my main point here is to encourage you to seek out those people now whom you will be able to rely on and find a way to stay connected. Many of you have already done this. Some of this are behind because we were too busy researching or whatever the issue or case might be. Um, now, for my part, I have already spoken with other concerned researchers, and we're in agreement on this. So for those who are interested in these communications, please go to the description box of this video and visit the We Want the Truth site link listed in it. We have posted a form for you to fill out. You are welcome to read through it and then decide. Or if you know me, then you already know it's good on my end. Um, everyone does things a little different. I'm out to control nothing. I'm out to see that this gets done. That's it, the end. Um, this is, you know, I, I have been contacted by so many people that can't find people in their own states or their own areas or people in other states so that they can just stay connected for as long as possible even via phone after the internet goes down if that happens we don't know exactly how it's going to happen or when it's going to happen um, on that note however I will not pretend that there won't be a degree of vetting involved I'm sorry but there are just too many wackos out there to not pay attention to who may be getting certain information. Knowing that, many of you will likely back off and find other ways and other people to connect with, and that is fine. But for the right people to know that, I look forward to hearing from those people soon. Because this is a time-sensitive project and we really don't know how much time we have, um, mere thoughts on that fluctuate day to day, this particular group must be restricted to those living in the United States and Canada, sorry. If you live elsewhere, then please find another way or create a way. It just has to get done. It's one of those things, guys, where you can't keep waiting for someone else to do it for you. We all know what happens when you rely on others. So put your foot down, get off your butt, and do it. 
don't think for a moment that they won't use their powers to try and divide us. We see them coming up with new ways every day to keep us from unifying. They can deal with anything peacefully but that. It is the one thing they do not think possible of us. And maybe it truly isn't. People have continually proven that they are right on that point by their simple indifference, ignorance, and complacency. My personal thoughts are, screw them, it's time to unite. So this is more or less step two. Step one was waking up in the first place. Now we've got all this information and we need to stay connected. Your shackles might not be tangible, but they're there. It's your option to remove them, though. I have shed mine. I refuse to live in fear or in acceptance of their every imposement on our liberties. This is one thing coming at us that we can actually do something and not be idle. There are so many other potential scenarios that have us stuck that we are just waiting for them to happen. There's nothing we can do about them. They're just, either they're, they're coming or they're on the verge of and we're trying to keep an eye on it. You guys know how this works. I know a number of people that if those scenarios do come into play, they plan to just roll over and die or hunker down where they are and cross their fingers. I am not one of those people. I do have things to live for, and I'm not the only one. There are such hopeless attitudes out there, and I'll admit that I have had days that lotted me into that crowd, because it is overwhelming what they have already done. But you can bet that this girl will not go down quietly, not while I remain able. Failure to prepare is preparation for failure. So if by some stroke of God the worst case scenarios do not get dealt into the cards, the new world order will still get us in the end. So if we do not set up contingency plans and roadblocks right now, then you may as well stamp your own prison papers. You will be owned. I, on the other hand, will stand. I will stand with 10 people. I will stand with 20 people or 100 people. I will stand with those who have enough hope, stubbornness, love, resolve, and balls to try.